Hey guys, Brian here, and I'm at Yosemite National Park. And uh, just beautiful scenery, other than the fire that's happening close by, producing a ton of smoke. So you can't hardly see anything, actually, which is a nice, well, not a nice reminder, but it is a reminder of the fall. And we live in a broken world, and sometimes bad things happen, including fires. And uh, it's kind of devastating to see the effects here in California. And of course, today here at Yosemite National Park, it's really hard to see the features as you look out. But as you do look out, there's some cool things. If you can kind of see with the camera, there's the Half Dome, uh, really well known. You have Nevada Falls, a little further over. We can actually hear the waterfalls from here, which is really, really cool. And then a little further below is Vernal Falls. And my wife and I actually hiked to that earlier today. It was awesome. Wore us out. We had a great time doing it. And I'm actually standing here in the Geology Hut at Glacier Point, one of the best lookouts of the entire area. And as you're at the Geology Hut, if you look over here, it talks about landscape in motion. It kind of gives you uh, the secular uh, explanation for what we're looking at. And they agree that, yes, there was a glacier that carved this. And we agree with that. Yes, there was glacial activity that created all this. But the time scale is totally different because they're approaching it from a uh, man's perspective, assuming long, slow, gradual processes. Whereas we look at this from a biblical perspective and say this, this was formed roughly around 4,000 years ago after the flood. Really, really formed because of the Ice Age and then the recession of the Ice Age. And it's interesting, the biblical, biblical account of the flood is really the best explanation for an Ice Age. Because to get an Ice Age, you need a weird combination of events. You need warm oceans and cooler continents. You need warm oceans to cause a lot of evaporation to get moisture into the skies, and you need cooler continents for that moisture to come down in the form of snow and ice to accumulate to form your glaciers. That will then later on melt and produce features like this. But that's a weird combination to get, but that's exactly what you would have after the flood. Because of the fountains of the great deep bursting forth, that subterranean water will be much warmer, closer to the mantle. Also, the lava flows into the ocean will increase their temperatures as well. That's going to warm your oceans. And then, because of all the volcanic activity, shooting dust and aerosols into the sky, blocking the sunlight, much like we see here today, and it's sort of, kind of sort of like that, blocking the sunlight, that's going to cool the continents. So it gives you the warmer oceans and the cooler continents, exactly what you need for a post-flood ice age. And computer simulation shows with the conditions you would have after the flood, you can get an ice age to roughly come and go in around 500 years after the flood. And during that time frame, towards the end, we see the actual formation of this feature. So just a beautiful view, typically not as beautiful today, but still gorgeous in its own account. And also a great reminder of the truthfulness of God's word and the biblical event of the flood. So I hope that helps. If you got some guests, it's a good thing. But you guys have a great day. Talk to you later. Thanks. Bye-bye.